So at this stage, we have an application that allows us to add a new contact to the given list. What I want to focus on in this video is how to upload files using HTMX into a Django application and how to store those files on cloud storage. And notably, we're going to use Amazon S3 in this video. Now, Amazon S3 is object storage and it's built to retrieve any amount of data from anywhere. And this is a leading object storage platform for your web applications. And we'll discuss the benefits of using a cloud service like this later in the video. And we're also going to use a package called Django Storages in order to integrate between Django and Amazon S3. So basically to start with, what I want to do to this modal that contains the form is add a file field here and allow the user to upload a file alongside the contact. So let's start with that. We're going to go back to VS Code and go to this application's models.py file. So let's load up models.py and we have the contact model here. So when we add a new contact, we optionally want to add a document here. So I'm going to add a document field to the model and that's going to be a models.file field. Now we're going to add some arguments to the file field. The first one is going to be upload to and that's going to give a location under the media route where the document is going to be uploaded to. So let's create one called contact docs and we'll see how this translates to an S3 bucket later in the video. As well as that, what we're going to do is add some validators here and that's a list of validators and we're going to import one at the top here. And this is basically to validate the file type or the file extension. So Django has in its validators module a file extension validator. We're going to copy that and we're going to add that into this validators array. And that will take some arguments and it's the extensions that we want to allow. Now I'm going to paste these in here. So we're going to allow PDFs, docs and .txt files to be uploaded. And finally, because we already have contacts in the database who do not have a document attached, we're going to add blank equals true and null equals true arguments to the document field. Now what I want to do at the bottom here is stop the Django server and we're going to run the make migrations command. And that's going to add that document field to the contact model and it's going to create the migration file. Then we can run migrate to actually make the change to the database. Once we've added the model field, what we can do is go to our applications forms.py and it's this form here, it's called contact form. This is what we see on the front end in this modal here. We need to add a file field here for the document. So what I'm going to do to start with is go down to the meta class for this model form and we have the fields here. We're going to add a field called document to the fields and I'm going to add that field explicitly on the class. So just like we've done for the email field here, what I'm going to do is copy that down and I'm going to call the field document and we're going to change a couple of things here. So it's going to be forms.file field and the widget is going to be a file input widget. I'm going to remove the placeholder as well. We don't need that and we're going to change some of the Daisy UI classes that we're using here. Now, if we go to the Daisy UI docs for file inputs, we have this component class here. So I'm going to copy that and let's add it to the classes here. And instead of input bordered, we have a slightly different one here. It's just got the file prefix. So we're going to copy that and let's add that just here. So now we have a document field. There's one last thing I want to add to the file field and we're going to say required equals false. So basically when we submit the form, we can optionally add a document, but it's not required by the form class. Now the last thing to do in order to get this showing on the page that we have here is to add it to the template. So let's bring back the sidebar and we're going to go to the add contact modal form template. And if we scroll down to the fields that we have here, for example, this one here for email, what I'm going to do is copy all of this content and we can add a second div just below the email field. And we can then change things up. So we're going to keep the classes of form control and width full. The label we're going to change from email to document. And we're going to change the field that we're using here from form.email to form.document. And we can paste that into the relevant parts of this template. Now let's show this and see what we have on the page. I'm going to refresh the page. And of course, we need to start the Django server before we do that. Once the server started, we can go back to this page and refresh. And when we click this button here, the modal opens and we have the form. And at the bottom, we have this new document field. Now, at the moment, when we submit the form with a file, it's not going to actually save that anywhere. So let's go back to views.py and let's change one more thing at the moment. What I'm going to do here is scroll up to the view here called create contact. And this is the view that's called when that form is submitted. Now, as well as passing request.post, when we have a file in Django, we also specify request.files and pass that to the form class because the files are uploaded into a separate query dictionary. So basically, as well as the data coming from the other two fields, the uploaded file has to be passed into the form instance in this Django view. So that's what we've added here on line 40. So we've now added the infrastructure in Django to submit the form and add a document upload to that process. What we now need to do is set the media backend. 
Now, as I said at the start of the video, we're going to use Amazon S3 for the documents. So when a user submits this form, the data is going to go to the database, but the uploaded file or the document is going to be stored in object storage on the cloud. And one of the main benefits of this is that if we have a Django application that scales horizontally, in other words, we take the Django application running on a single server and we scale that out to run on two, three or more servers. When we have a centralized location for media files and documents such as Amazon S3, it means that all of those applications, no matter what server they're on, can all access those documents. Whereas if you store media files on the file system on each individual server, that's going to cause complications if you do scale horizontally. And of course, Amazon S3 comes with a host of other benefits such as versioning and automatic replication. Now I want to set up Django storages now so that we can use Django and store those files on Amazon S3 very easily. So let's go to this page on using Amazon S3 and we're going to walk through these steps. So to start with, we need to install Django storages and also the Boto3 library, which is for AWS integration with Python applications. So let's stop the server at the bottom and clear this out. And we're going to paste in this pip install command. And that's going to install the Django storages package along with all of its dependencies for S3. Now, once that's installed, what I'm going to do is go to the Amazon AWS console and I'm going to go to this page on S3 buckets. Now, I've got a number of buckets in here and I've got nine of these for my own use cases. What I'm going to do now is create a bucket using this button at the top right. So let's click that and we're taken to the create bucket page. So I'm going to create a general purpose bucket here called Contact Hub Media. And for simplicity, what I'm going to do is turn off this block all public access restriction. So the objects in the bucket are going to become public here, which is maybe what you want, but it's probably not what you want for user media uploads. And there are ways to protect these uploads if you want to do so, such as creating a private bucket and using signed URLs. But that's outside of the scope of this video. I'm also going to disable versioning, but in a production setting, you might want to enable this. And that's for recovery purposes if anything goes wrong. Now I'm going to leave the rest of the settings as they are and then we're going to click this create bucket button here at the bottom right. Now when I click that button I'm getting this error here and I think that's because when I was preparing this content I used the same bucket name so I'm going to add an extra dash into the bucket name here and let's try this again at the bottom right and this time it looks like it's going through. So now we see the contact hub media bucket and if we click through to that, we can see at the moment we have no objects within that bucket, but it has been created and we can now start to reference that from our Django application. Let's go back to the Django storages configuration page. And what we're going to add here is a storages setting in Django. If you're using Django 4.2 and above on versions less than that, you can use different settings here, such as default file storage. But we are on a more modern version of Django. So we're going to copy this storages setting and let's go back to VS Code. I'm going to minimize this and let's go to settings.py and at the bottom here, let's set the storages and I'm going to remove this here and actually let's just remove the options entirely. So the default storage backend is going to be S3 storage and that comes from Django storages. I'm also going to add another backend here and that's for the static files in the application. So we don't want to use S3 for static files. We want to use for now the default static file storage in Django. So we're going to set it to that. In the final video, when we deploy this application to render, we're going to change this to use the white noise package. So now we've configured the storages setting and it's going to use S3 storage by default for media files. We can now go back to the Django storages documentation. Once we've added that, we need to specify how to authenticate with the S3 client. Now we're going to create some environment variables here for the AWS S3 access key ID, as well as the secret access key. Now to get these keys, what we need to do is go back to the AWS platform. And I'm going to go to a service called Identity and Access Management, otherwise known as IAM. Now I've prepared a user in this application, so I'm going to go to the users page. And you can see at the top here, I've got a contact hub user. I'm going to click through to that user. And at the moment, this user has all permissions. It's got administrator access. For S3 only, you can restrict this further. But again, that's outside of the scope of the video. But for example, you could add an S3 full access policy to give the user full access to S3, but no access to other Amazon services. What we're going to do in order to create the access and secret key is go to security credentials for this user. And if we scroll down, we have a section on access keys. Let's create an access key. And with these access key options that we have here, I'm going to select other. If you have one of the other use cases above, there are better alternatives than using these keys, but we don't have that. So we're going to click other. And then at the bottom right, we're going to click next. And you can optionally give this description a tag. I'm not going to do that. 
what we're going to do is go to this page here and we're going to copy the access key. And what I'm going to do is just paste these into a notepad for now. We're going to take note of these because once we navigate away from this page, we're never going to see the secret key again. So let's take a note of the access key and just below that, the secret key. We're going to need these in this video to tell Django Storages how to connect to S3. We're also going to need it in the final video to tell Render about these settings as well. Now what we're going to do on our local environment for now is stop the Django server and I'm going to set these environment variables on PowerShell. Now if we go back to the Django Storages documentation, let's start with the AWS S3 access key ID. We're going to set this to the first value that we copied from the AWS console. So let's do that just now and paste that in here. And that's going to set this variable here. If you're using an Unix system, you can export the variable name, for example, using this syntax here and set it to the same value. And as well as the access key, we need to do something similar for the secret key. So let's get the name of that from the Django Storages documentation. It's going to be AWS S3 secret access key. And we're going to set that to the second value that we copied from the AWS console there for this user. So let's paste that in here. And now we have these environment variables set locally. And of course, you could also derive these values from a .n file if you're using something like Django Environ. Now that these are set, if we go back to settings.py, just below the storages setting, we're going to read these in. So what I'm going to do is set AWS S3 access key ID. And we can use os.environ.get to get a value from the environment variables. And the value was equal to that here. So that's the name that we set in the environment. So we're basically reading this in from the environment variables. When we use render in the final video, we're going to set those in the render console as well. And we need to import the OS module in order to do this statement here, where we read stuff from the environment. Now what I'm going to do is just copy this to the line below. And we're going to do the same for the AWS secret key. So let's paste this in here and we're reading that from the environment as well. And there's a couple of extra settings we need to use here for Django storages. One is the bucket name that we're going to use. So let's do that just now. And if we look at the AWS console for this, I'm just going to paste this in. So let's go back to AWS and let's copy the name of our bucket here. And we're going to paste that into this setting. And there's one final setting I want to add here, and that's the region name for the bucket. So let's go back to S3. And we're going to copy this region here. It's US East 1 where this has been created and we can paste that in here. So that's the settings we need for Amazon S3 and for Django storages. And if we upload user media files using this form and using the document field here, we should now see those appearing in the S3 bucket. But in order for the add contact form to work with a file using HTMX to submit that form, there is one last step we need to do here. We need to add a new HTMX attribute to the form on submission, and that's the HX encoding attribute. So what is this attribute? Let's go to the HTMX documentation on file upload. When you upload a document or any kind of file using a form, you need to specify the encoding as multi-part form data. And this is not just an HTMX thing. If you use a normal submission of a form that sends a post request to the back end, for example, and that form contains a file, you're going to need to set the ink type attribute on the form to multi-part form data. So let's just copy HX encoding and let's go back to the modal where we're actually submitting this form. And if we scroll up to the form, what we're going to do now is add the HX encoding attribute and set that to multi-part form data. And we're now ready to test this out. So what I'm going to do is clear the terminal and start the Django server. And hopefully this is going to work. If we go back to our application, let's refresh the page. And when we click add a new contact here, if we fill that in with some data and notice we have a document called test.txt, when we submit this using the add contact button, notice that the row has appeared here on the page. But the question is, has the document been uploaded to the bucket? So let's test that out and go back to S3 here. If we go to the contact hub media bucket, notice that we now have that contact docs folder. And within that, there's a file called test.txt. And the contact docs, that refers to what we had in models.py. And that specifies where under the media route to upload the documents to for this field. And of course, in this setting, the media route is just the bucket itself. And that's why we see that on S3 in this location. And I'm also going to go to the Django admin and let's go to this users page here. And in fact, what we want is contacts. And if I go to this guy with file and we look at this guy, you can see that the document field here contains that test.txt file. And we can actually view that if we click that. And the text that I had in that file just contained this. And if we look at the link at the top here, it's using that S3 bucket on Amazon. So we now have media files set up to use AWS and to use S3 when a user uploads a file 
and associates that with the contact, it's going to create that file on the back end and store it in S3. And that gives us that central location for media files that users upload. And that's a nice benefit here. And we've seen how to use the HX encoding attribute in HTMX in order to enable these file uploads. Now, one last thing I want to show here, when we have the list of contacts, I want to show the documents that have been associated with each contact. So we're gonna add another column here to this table. So let's go back to VS Code, and we're gonna to go to the contact list partial that contains all of these headers for each field in the table. And let's create another one here, and I'm gonna call that one document. Now, if we scroll down, we have the table body here, and it includes the contact row.html partial. So let's search for that and go to that page. And just after the created date, we're gonna create a new table data row here. And within here, what we're gonna do is check if the contact.document is not null. And don't forget to end the if statement in the template. And if it's not null, we can create an anchor tag to retrieve that document. So A with an href attribute that's gonna to point to contact.document and file fields in Django have a .url property allowing you to retrieve the link to that file. And let's add some classes here. I'm going to add a class of button to this. So the user's gonna click a button in order to retrieve the file. We'll give it a button ghost class and a button extra small class. And finally, let's set target to blank here in order to open the document on a new page. And let's give the anchor tag the text of download document. And then we can close the anchor tag and add an else block here if we want as well. So if contact.document is going to be null, we can just show a span in that case with the text red 500 class telling us that the contact has no document. Let's now test this out again and go back to our page here. When we refresh the page, notice that all of the existing contacts have no document, but this one here now has a button and when we click that button, we retrieve the document from S3. So we now have a system set up where we can add a new contact and we can add a document to this to associate the contact with a document. When we click this button here, it's gonna add that to the back end and that user appears here with an option to download the document. And because we're using that file extension validator in models.py, if we upload a file with an extension that doesn't conform to what we have here, it's not gonna be accepted. And because in the modal that contains the form field, we have this if statement here that looks if form.document contains any errors, any errors associated with the file type are gonna be shown here using this line of code. So let's test that out just before we finish the video and go back to this page. If we add a new contact, and this time I've selected a JSON file, if we click add contact, you can see that that is not allowed. So it tells us that that extension is not allowed and it tells us which ones are permitted. So we've added a file upload that takes place using Ajax requests and HTMX and stores that content in an Amazon S3 bucket on the back end. And the key thing to remember is that we use the HX encoding attribute to set the encoding type to multi-part form data for that post request containing the file. And if you want to make this even better, what you could do, for example, is make sure that the objects in your S3 bucket are not public. And you can use signed URLs for access. And you can also access these objects through a CDN such as Amazon CloudWatch. And that's gonna be better for performance as it's gonna distribute the media files across different edge locations and it's not gonna hit the bucket directly. And these are outside the scope of this video, but it might be interesting to explore those ideas if you're following along. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we're gonna prepare Tailwind, Daisy UI and HTMX for deployment. At the moment, we're loading those from a CDN. That's not optimal for production. So we're gonna fix that in the next video.